Hey everybody, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by our own Gabe Morenci as we take a look at his six best bets for week nine of this NFL season. What's happening, Gabe? Ready to rock and roll. Let's do this. Let's begin in London, our final London game of this season as the Houston Texans and Jacksonville Jaguars travel for an early morning kickoff here on the East Coast at 9.30 a.m. You've been all over these London games all season long, Gabe. What do we like in this one? You know, the AFC South is an interesting division. It's one of the most competitive divisions in the National Football League. Uh, every year, basically, to win this division, you're 9-7, and seven, and you might be tied uh, with somebody. Tiebreakers are always massive in this division. Another thing about the AFC South, it's sort of like uh, like fighting, and it's fitting. We have a massive uh, UFC card at Madison Square Garden uh, this weekend. The styles make fights. In this division... Um, history repeats itself over and over and over. Um, the Colts always beat the Texans. Uh, the Titans can't beat the Colts, but the Texans always beat the Jags. History repeats itself. This is one of the more one-sided rivalries and division rivalries in the National Football League right now. Uh, the Texans have beaten the Jaguars nine of the last 11 times that they've played. We, we, the, the point spread's one point here. So we sort of take that out of the equation, the point spread, so we can just talk about straight up They've beaten them nine of the last 11 times they've played. They're 14-4 and four against uh, the Jags the last 18 times that they've played. Uh, Houston Texans are getting MVP caliber uh, football right now from Deshaun Watson. I don't think he's going to win because their record won't be good enough uh, in the end. I think Aaron Rodgers will be your MVP uh, this year. Uh, but for the record, uh, right now, FanDuel has Deshaun Watson at plus 350 to win the MVP. The Texans are 7-2-1 and one against the spread the last 10 games on the road. And albeit in London, it's a neutral game. No. Is it, uh, is it in Houston, Texas? No. Then it's on the road, right? And technically, it is a road game. Uh, the Jags are the home team. And this is the Jags home away from home. They might actually have more fans in London than they do Jacksonville. And I'm not just saying that. They're popular in Jacksonville. Their owner uh, has, uh, lives in uh, London. Uh, this is the seventh time the Jags have played there for the record. They're 3-3 three and three straight up and against the spread. Make it 3-4 and four as history repeats itself. Give me Deshaun Watson over the dude with the mustache. Good for you. You got a mustache. Deshaun Watson's one of the best quarterbacks uh, in the league. The Houston Texans are going to barbecue the Jags in the land of fish and chips. Give me the Houston Texans. Texans are the play for Gabe. Just a one-point spread here in this one, so it simply does not matter. The Houston Texans, the better football team, the team that Gabe expects to win on Sunday. Moving on, we go to the Indianapolis Colts, who are also a slight favorite here this week, facing off against Pittsburgh. And Gabe, this team may be without both T.Y. Hilton and Eric Ebron, and yet... You're still buying the Colts. Well, it's a, it's a problem, uh, Greg, and this is the thing. We're, we don't do these videos uh, Sunday morning at uh, 1250. If you want that, then come visit us at the FanDuel Sportsbook uh, for our last second uh, picks. What are we going to do? We can't be worried about injuries uh, right now. Uh, you know, similar situation with this Minnesota and Kansas City game. But I'll tell you what, one thing about the Colts. The Colts are actually a better road team than they are at home which is kind of strange. It's a recent trend that we're seeing. Look at the World Series. Home field isn't what it used to be. It's not granddaddy's home field anymore. We'll put it that way. You look at the Indianapolis Colts. They beat Tennessee uh, on the road. Tennessee's not an easy place to win. They beat Tennessee on the road. They beat Kansas City on the road. They go home. They lose to the Raiders outright. It's like six and a half, seven point favorites or whatever it was. It might have even been higher. Uh, Denver last week. They were lucky to win that game. Joe Flacco was right. Denver gave them that game. Uh, Indy really didn't have any business winning that game, but that's why we're getting value here. Pittsburgh's got problems, guys. Don't be fooled by the fact they beat the uh, the Miami Dolphins. And I give credit to the Steelers, the fact that they're only one game under 500 right now, that they battled back uh, like this. But it's one thing to beat the Miami Dolphins on Monday night. I don't like the spot short week uh, as well uh, for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And I like uh, Indianapolis. Talking about injured players, and uh, Greg, you brought up Ebron, you brought up uh, T.Y. Hilton, I don't really even mind that. It's going to force them to run the ball a little bit more, play a smart uh, smart road football game. To me, Darius Leonard is the most important player on the Indianapolis Colts uh, right now. We see the difference uh, that it makes when he's uh, on the field and he's not on the field. Uh, the Colts have been very good on the road, and I'm not just saying that. They're 7-2 and two against the spread their last nine trips on the highway. Make it 8-2. and two. Colts win a close uh, close one on the road. 
It should be lower scoring, but I'm not going to mess with the total. Yeah, give me the horseshoes. A low scoring game is what we predict in this battle between the Steelers and the Colts. Darius Leonard, the most important player on the field, and he could be the difference between a win and a loss for Indianapolis on Sunday. Up next, a battle between the Eagles and the Bears. Eagles are a four and a half point favorite here in this one on the FanDuel Sportsbook, and it's a revenge game for Jordan Howard. You buy an in game? It's a quadruple revenge game, actually, uh, as uh, the Birds have owned the Bears. Uh, over the years. They've beaten them four straight times, including in last year's playoff game as well. You mentioned uh, the number five, and I'm really glad that it's moved off of the number five to four and a half, because five is a crooked number, all right? And any odds maker, bookmaker will tell you uh, when the number is five, they're basically letting the market uh, decide the football game. You know, I think these are teams going in different directions uh, right now. Philadelphia are volatile, Philadelphia, it's amazing how all these Philadelphia sports teams are the same. Like, they, it can, they can either be really, really good. When things are going well for them, they're really, really good. When things are, like, when there's turmoil, it gets ugly fast. And I think the Philadelphia Eagles might have found themselves last week against my uh, Buffalo Bills. And uh, we give uh, congratulations to the Eagles. They played a hell of a football game. The Eagles really are that good against the run. When I saw their stats and, oh, they're giving up 62 yards and all that type of stuff, I was like, yeah, whatever, man. They're, they're, they're playing in these track meet pass happy games. But the fact is, you can't run on these guys. You really can't run on the Philadelphia Eagles. And we all know their weakness is the secondary. Well, we talk about styles make fights. The Chicago Bears don't have the best passing game. Very similar to the Buffalo Bills. I look at the Bills and the Bears. They're kind of the same team, uh, really. And I know, like, they're different. Each team is different. And the Bears aren't the same as last year. But generally, elite defense, pedestrian offense. And I think the, the Bills' offense is better than the Bears' offense. So, the, and this is at Philly. So, the Eagles are going to take away the ground game. They're going to force Trubisky to beat him through the air. And I don't think he can do that. Um, and also, the Eagles are getting healthier. I'm a big Jason Peters fan. Makes a massive difference to their offensive line. Uh, and they're getting Deshaun uh, Jackson uh, back. So should get about uh, two, three quarters out of him before he gets uh, hurt again. Give me the Philadelphia Eagles minus the four and a half points. In that quadruple revenge game, the Eagles will do enough to get by the Chicago Bears. And ultimately, Deshaun Jackson will hopefully last the length of this one. We'll take the Eagles by four and a half. Up next, the Minnesota Vikings in Kansas City. Probably without Patrick Mahomes for the Chiefs. Vikings, two and a half point favorite in this one. In a game, we expect them to get Adam Thielen back in. Gabe, what say you? Well, we can't confirm that Mahomes is going to be out as of uh, right now, but I don't think he's going to play. He practiced Thursday, uh, wasn't in pads. No reason to rush him back. They're still going to win this division anyways. So I, I'm assuming it's going to be Matt Moore, but the betting market is betting on KC. I mean, this was three earlier in the week, two and a half, two, one and a half. I wouldn't be surprised if it even fell to one, as we're seeing a lot of one-point uh, road favorites uh, this week. Now, listen, you guys know the drill. When the Minnesota Vikings are playing non-division opponents, I tell you this uh, every, every week or every couple of weeks, when they are, you have to take them, all right? Now, I know it's better at home. It's like monstrous at home. It's literally like 22 and 2 at home right now. But overall, Mike Zimmer is 40, 14 and 2 against the spread. That's right, 40, 14 and 2 against the spread against non division opponents. Uh, he feasts on the AFC as well. Uh, 16 and 5 ATS. Last 21 times he's played an AFC team, uh, he's covered 16 of them. Meanwhile, the Kansas City Chiefs, they've been struggling at home, man. Arrowhead's not what it uh, used to be. Uh, um, one six and one against the spread the last eight times they played against NFC teams uh, as well. Chiefs 0-3 straight up uh, and against uh, the spread uh, right now at home. They're on a bad home run uh, right now. They're going to be in tough uh, to win this football game. I expect Alvin Cook uh, to have a big uh, game. Uh, I don't fully trust Captain Kirk uh, Cousins uh, on the road, but in Zimmer, I trust uh, they own the AFC. Zimmer owns non-division opponents. Minnesota wins the football game, and then Mahomes comes back uh, next week. In Zimmer, we trust once again, especially against those AFC opponents. Get in on Mike Zimmer. Get in on the Minnesota Vikings here on Sunday. Coming up next game, we get to Miami. The Dolphins are three-point dogs at home against the New York Jets. The Adam Gase return to Miami. What do you think? Wow. You know what? I generally have stayed away. I remember uh, when people were all excited about that Washington-Miami game just because how bad it was. 
I didn't have any interest in it. This one I do. Get the popcorn out. And in fact, they should have flexed this and put it in prime time. Uh, you know, I don't know if you guys know this, but quick history lesson. Going back, I think it was 1981, 1982-ish, uh, but the Jets were playing the Dolphins, and NBC knew that nobody would care about the game, <laughs> essentially. And there was a big game with playoff implications on, uh, like CBS. So NBC decided to have no announcers uh, for the game. It was the only time ever. It's the only NFL game they ever broadcasted. They just put mics on the field, and uh, they, they turned up the public address uh, announcer so you could hear when it was a first down, et cetera, first down, uh, Dolphins. They probably should have done something, uh, you know, similar to this. Uh, maybe they should have had, like, uh, you know, a let, let a fan participate in the game type of contest because this is what we have here. But it's so bad, it's good. And really, the New York Jets are now three-and-a-half-point road favorites? It was three. Now, listen, whoever is out there, and if you bet the Jets and you move this number to three-and-a-half, my number is 647 Klondike 555 Please call me. I'll take your action. Entertainment purposes only. All kidding aside, guys, really? What the hell are you doing? You're betting on the New York Jets? First off, the New York Jets suck. Secondly, Adam Gase blows. Thirdly, the Jets uh, don't win on the road. They're 3-17 and 17 straight up in their last 20 road games. Uh, you want to lay points with the Jets? They're 1-6 against the spread. Even Fireman Ed doesn't bet on the Jets when they go on the road. The Miami Dolphins have actually been competitive. Uh, you know, they've covered their last three football games, and people talk about the Dolphins tanking. Maybe the organization wants to tank, but the players on the field aren't trying to tank. It's the stupidest thing ever. Like, anyone ever, if someone ever tells you, oh, a team is tanking, they're going to lose. You think a player on the court, ice, or field is going to try to lose a game so the team can draft a player that plays the same position as him to replace him, right? All right that makes a lot of sense. If teams are going to tank, they just put bad players on the field. The bad players are still going to try. And the Miami Dolphins want this. I, you, you're going to trust Adam Gase? Come on, man. The Jets are a bigger mess than a frat boy's uh, dorm room on Sunday morning. Like they, 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 They've got yeah, this, this game to me. It's amazing. As bad as the Dolphins are, I'm getting crazy. I'm getting crazy. I want to run to the ATM right now and take out all my money and uh, bet on the Miami Dolphins. And I know my main man, Frank Stample, is a member of Gang Green. And watch out, you're going to get Gang Green following this team. But this one's for you, Frank. Give me the fish. The Miami Dolphins, who have not won a game all season, is Gabe's choice here this Sunday. Jets, Jets, J-E-T-S-L-O-S-E. Lose, lose, lose. Miami wins. Gabe goes with the fish. We'll see what happens on Sunday. Well, give me the points. I'm not saying money like <laughs> We are continuing on one final bet to get to. It's the Los Angeles Chargers at home. Taking on Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Jones for the Green Bay Packers. You like the Chargers in this one. How come? Yeah, that's right. You know why? Because I like it even more with the skepticism in your voice. Yeah, I, I heard. You like the Chargers. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's the same thing I heard. You like the Cardinals? Really? You like the Cardinals? All right. All right. All right. All right. Yeah, yeah. I like the Cardinals. How'd that work out? Cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. Man, the Green Bay Packers are good. I think Aaron Rodgers is going to be your most valuable player this year. He's in about 300 range right now, plus 300 at FanDuel. Um, sometimes you've got to go with your gut. And you guys know I'm a pretty big trend better, but I'm also a big situational spot uh, better. The Green Bay Packers have been cruising along. Green Bay Packers uh, had a big game uh, on national television, Sunday night football. They beat the Kansas City Chiefs. Now they have to go back into the AFC West. They have to go into Los Angeles. Now, this is going to be like a home game for the Green Bay Packers. Like, make no mistake about it. Um, they, it holds about 30,000 people or so. It's probably going to be about 28,000 Packer fans. Uh, the Packer fans travel better than anybody. They're, you know, all the cold weather markets travel the best. Packers uh, travel the best. Chief fans travel. Bills fans travel. Uh, same in college football. Penn State fans you know, generally these cold weather, diehard football frenzies, uh, markets, Pittsburgh Steelers, you know, took over. Uh, they're, they're really going to take this stadium over, but whatever, man. Fans in the stands don't win football games. Players on the field do. And I'm going with my gut here. I just don't think that it should be three and a half points. I don't think the Packers should be laying this uh, on the road. The Chargers weren't as good as they were hyped up to be to come into the year. 
they're not as bad as people are hyping up to be uh, right now over the last couple of weeks. I don't mind the change at offensive coordinator with Wisenhunt uh, getting the boot. Um, and I'll tell you what, if the Chargers lose, they always lose in like heartbreaking fashion by a single point or by a last second field goal. They either lose by, they either like lose by the other team hitting a field goal or they'll miss a field goal or they'll miss an extra point. And, uh, something crazy and strange will happen uh, with the Chargers. But I'm getting three and a half points here. Upsets, uh, upset special. We'll give you the points, but I think the Chargers probably win the game outright anyways. You heard the skepticism in my voice. That's why I don't bet. Gabe's our expert. He likes the Chargers, plus the points, even on the money line a little bit. The Chargers, the play here on Sunday. That's going to do it for us here on the FanDuel. Hurry up. Good luck with your bets this week. Have some fun. Win some money. And we'll see you back here on Monday to preview Monday Night Football. Have a great weekend and enjoy Week 9.